Okay, so Google just made on-device retrieval augmented generation or RAG a lot easier with this new lightweight embedding model they're calling Embedding Gemma. It's trained on top of their Gemma 3. It's extremely lightweight, which makes it very useful for running on-device. Especially, you need around 200 megabytes of VRAM. But it goes beyond simple search. You can use the same model for other natural language processing tasks, such as classification or a topic modeling. So later in the video, I'll show you how to effectively set this for different tasks, because setting this up can be a bit tricky. Now, the model itself is about 300 million parameters, which makes it a very small and lightweight model but it's best in class for its weight. Later in the video, I'll show you how to use this in a simple RAG setup, as well as some classification examples using this model. But before that, let's look at some quick technical details. So this is trained on top of the Gemma 3 architecture. It supports more than 100 languages, which makes it extremely excellent for multilingual tasks. The output dimensions of this model are customizable. So the biggest dimension you can get is 768 and the lowest is 128. So it uses Matryoshka representation, which essentially is a dimensionality reduction technique for embedding models. So you can basically truncate the models at different dimensions. Now keep in mind that this also is going to result in loss of accuracy. So as expected, more dimensions in the output will preserve more accuracy. As you reduce the number of dimensions in the output of the embedding model, the accuracy also decreases. But you save both on speed as well as on compute cost. So if you're looking for a lightweight embedding model, this could be an excellent candidate. So here, a quick comparison on MTEB benchmark. The best embedding model sub 1 billion parameter right now is the Quen embedding 600 million parameters. But this is almost half the size and I think it still preserves the performance relative to the other embedding models. So this is going to be an excellent choice for lightweight retrieval. Out of all the frontier labs, Google is in a very interesting position right now. So they have open weight models like Gemma 3, or more lightweight Gemma 3N for developers who are interested in open weight models. On the other hand, if you're trying to use Frontier models, then you have Gemini 2.5 Pro. And even for embeddings, you have the state-of-the-art Gemini embeddings, which are multimodal in nature. So they really are trying to meet developers where they are. So I'm going to show you some quick code examples, but before that, I want to highlight a very interesting research out of the DeepMind team. So I'll probably create another a detailed video on this, but there was an interesting paper on the theoretical limits of embedding-based retrieval, which shows that dense embedding-based retrieval in RAG systems have their inherent flaws. And they have theoretical limits when it comes to retrieving correct documents. So irrespective of the size of the embedding model and the power of the embedding model that you're using, there are theoretical limits when it comes to retrieval. Which means we might be leaving a lot on the table if just relying on dense embedding models. Now, the embedding gemma are also dense embedding models, so they will also suffer from that theoretical limit. In the rest of the video, I'll show you an example of how to use this in a retrieval augmented generation system. But first, I want to show you how to effectively use them. Since they support retrieval classification and topic modeling like tasks. But before that, it supports multiple different dimensions and the accuracy of retrieval is going to be dependent on the length of the output vector. On average, you can expect about 3% drop from the highest dimension to the lowest dimensions. For code-related tasks, it's, I think, a lot more significant. We're seeing about 6% drop. Also, you can run these in different precisions because they have quantization-aware training. 
but the effect of quantization is not as pronounced as the uh, dimensions or the output size. Next, uh, based on the task that you're performing, you will have to set your prompt instructions in a different way. The form that it follows is nature of the task. So that is whether retrieval, classification, question, answer, and then the query or the document that is going to be provided by the user. So for example, if you're doing a retrieval and you are providing the user query, then the task is going to be search result and the query content. If you are embedding the documents, then you're going to have title of the document. It can be set to none and then the actual text. So this metadata helps the embedding model do better retrieval. Then you also have support for question answering. In this case, the task is question answering and the query is going to be the user query. Also, they support fact checking, classification, topic modeling or clustering, center similarity and code retrieval. So these are different distinct tasks for which you can use this embedding model. Okay, so this is a quick notebook provided by the Gemma team for setting up RAG or retrieval augmented generation. So in this case, they're using the transformer package. So we set up our pipeline. The model that is being used for text generation in RAG is Gemma 3, 4 bit, the instruct fine tune version. Then for embedding, we're using the embedding Gemma 300 million parameters. And if you look at the architecture, so the maximum sequence length that you can feed into the model is 2048 tokens. That means your chunk size can be this large. The output dimension by default is 768, but you can truncate it to different sizes based on your needs, as I showed you before. Now, if you're using the transformer package, then the nature of the task definition is going to be a little different. So you're going to provide either your document or your query. Then the prompt instruction is going to be prompt name and then the nature of the task. So in this case, we are embedding the user query and the nature of the task is going to be a retrieval query. If you are embedding documents, then you just need to set them up like this. So it's going to be the title of the document and then the actual text. And if you don't have a title of the document, then you set the title to none and just provide the actual text. So this is how you do document embedding. And the first part was related to query embedding. And here are again, a list of different available tasks. So in fact, actually you can do a lot more. You can use the same model for re-ranking, summarization as well, multi-label classification, instruction retrieval, classification clustering, and I think there are some other options as well. Okay, so for this simple rack setup, our corpus consists of HR and leave policies. There are different document categories. For each one of them, you have the document title, the actual contents. So this is just a dictionary of different policy documents. The user query is how do I reset my password? We set the similarity threshold. And then there are a couple of helper functions to calculate the best match. So basically it computes the similarity across all the documents and then picks the document with the best similarity. And first we are looking at the category of documents. So we have the HR and leave policies, IT and security, finance and expenses, office and facilities. And then within those, we are looking at the best document. So this is basically the retrieval part for generation. We need the Gemma 3N model. So here is a simple prompt template, which tells the model to answer the question based on the provided context. The context is going to be the retrieved documents and the question is going to be coming from the user query. Again, we're using transformers package here. So when the user query is, how do I reset my password? It looked at the document category. It found account password management to be the best category. And then it did the retrieval for that specific question. You can also fine tune this model for your specific task. You need to curate a data set. The data set is supposed to have triplets. In this case, each example is going to contain three different samples. Two of them are going to be relevant and one of them is completely irrelevant. So 
the examples are going to be your anchor positive example and negative example then you select the loss that you want to use for training here they're using the sentence transformer training package you're going to provide the output directory where you want to place your model number of fx and batch size along with the learning rate right so the rest of the training is very similar to how you would train a neural network now here are just a quick examples of before fine tuning what the similarity score could potentially look like if you do search on the same corpus versus when you have fine tuned the model so let me know if you are interested in more detailed tutorial on how to fine tune embedding models but overall i think this is an excellent embedding model for lightweight retrieval when you have a relatively small number of documents and you want quick retrieval do check it out let me know how your experience is and also let me know if you are interested in a fine tuning of embedding models Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.